1951, a group of Quakers came from uh, Alabama, and uh, it's part of their ethic to, uh, to conserve. And so uh, they purchased mm, 3,000 acres, and 1,200 of those acres were still virgin forest, and the group decided to leave it that way just to conserve, preserve the, the watershed. Uh, so it was an unofficial preserve for a number of years. Um, but when it got to, uh, in, into the 70s, uh, Atlanta adjoining their uh, forested area, which had been um, virgin forest, uh, people started moving into it and, and cutting uh, bits and pieces. Not too much had been cut, but uh, it was, you could see the handwriting on the wall. Um, the Monteverde Cloud Forest Preserve uh, was founded and they were purchasing land and got to a point that uh, they were no longer purchasing much. But a group of us here in the community, uh, which included uh, business people, teachers, professors, uh, uh, professional biologists, but a lot of, of um, just neighbors that were interested in preserving more, they uh, said, well, let's start a new organization and try to preserve uh, more of this land um, and since a lot of the land going down the mountain you, you notice how dry it was coming up here um, it needed to be preserved too because there are animals that move up and down the mountain we want to basically preserve biodiversity for as many species as possible both plants and animals and in many cases it takes a large area um, so we um, formed an organization in 1986 and uh, made uh, contacts with the World Wildlife Nature Conservancy and many other organizations. And they, they raised some, some seed money to get us started. Well, a couple years after we uh, founded the organization and had, had made down payments and, and bought a few farms, uh, one of our members was visiting in Sweden and she made contact with a, uh, a grade school out in the countryside and gave a talk and the uh, children, um, nine and ten year olds, they were so interested they said, well let's uh, buy a piece of land for our school in the name of our school or the children. So uh, we received uh, uh, money from them and uh, television crews and newspapers in Sweden got hold of the information and they started uh, broadcasting about it and uh, after an, a few years practically every school in Sweden was sending us money. Um, we set up a, a sister organization in Sweden but now we have them in, in England and Germany and, and Japan as well as the states in Canada and so um, it became something that the kids were, were interested in. So we thought, well, since they've done so much, let's, let's call what we have purchased the children's rainforest. 